The great thing about the ARP 2600 is distortion. Everything in it is set up to distort. And, I mean, not distortion as like overdrive, but just subtle distortion where variation is introduced. And these are the things that give synthesizers an organic and desirable sound. And the ARP 2600 is designed to do it just in a number of ways. For example, I mean, okay, so we've played around with VCO2 modulating the frequency of VCO1 in subtle ways with various waveforms. But also, let's not forget that we can start messing with the modulations that VCO2 have as it is modulating VCO1, which just things get crazy. So the envelope is modulating oscillator 2 while it's modulating oscillator 1. And also, oscillator 1 is modulating oscillator 2 as oscillator 2 is modulating oscillator 1. And then with the sample and hold. some noise. So you can see, and that's just one of the modulations. Then we throw in the sample and hold onto oscillator one. And the envelope. So you can see the huge amount of bizarre noises you can make while even using these functions in subtle ways, bringing a body and breadth to what would be just straight and sterile oscillator tones. And that's what is so great about the ARP 2600. And I think you're gonna get sick of me saying, and that is what's so great about the ARP 2600 because at every turn, there was something like this where you're like, well, you can do this and then, and if you just wanna do this, this, and this, you could do this. And that's because it's semi-modular. I mean, that's why it has so much possibility. And let's face it, really, so far, we're not even getting into patching. And if this thing suddenly wasn't even able to patch, you'd still have access to functionality like I just showed you. Okay, let's move down to the FM control. This is frequency modulation control. And these are basically, now these are marked for the normal uh, functions. The slider is set to control sample and hold input. This slider is set to control envelope input and this one VCO2 input. But any of these can be overridden by whatever you want to put in. If I want to put two different on like the two different envelopes into different places, if I want to run a patch from the envelope into this particular input and then and the other envelope, let's say, into this particular input, that's fine. These inputs are open to whatever source of modulation you want to put into them. And then the slider controls the amount of whatever you have directed into it, whereas that which has not been plugged into retains its normal function, which in this case would be the sample and hold. Um, looking at oscillator two, which is the best oscillator, <laughs> it's the best oscillator on the ARP 2600, and here's why. Because it has the most outputs. It has a triangle output. Let's listen to them as I talk about them. It has a triangle output. It has a saw output. It has a sine wave output. And it has a square pulse, etc. wave output. Which basically sets this oscillator up, oscillator 2, as being the ideal low frequency oscillator. Because what is the most common 
waveform for low frequency oscillators, it is of course the sine wave. We usually want to modulate with the sine wave because it's such an even and flowing waveform and it has, um, you know, the most musical effect. Um, this is great. So like we can switch onto low frequency and direct this wherever we want. Let's, that's kind of boring. We can put it into oscillator one. And there's our sine wave, you know, being a sine wave in a low frequency oscillator. That's awesome. The only problem about oscillator two is, oscillator two is the oscillator with pulse width modulation. And that is depressing because it is also the oscillator that has the sine wave. Now, I don't know about you, but I often like to have a sine wave control my pulse width modulation on an audio oscillator. But right here we run into a problem because when it's in audio mode, the sine wave is not going to be a suitable uh, pulse width modulation oscillator because it's at audio frequency, which is not going to give you that wonderful, warm pulse width modulation sweep. It's going to give you something buzzy and insane. So this is a design flaw of the ARP 2600. I don't know why they did this. And I mean, they could have come up with an easy answer to this by putting the triangle wave as oscillator on oscillator one, because triangle wave in modulation sounds pretty much like a sine wave. So then you'd be like, okay, sine or oscillator two may have the sine wave and that makes it a great low frequency oscillator, but at least oscillator one has the triangle wave and you could plug the, patch them in so that the, Oscillator one could be a low frequency oscillator controlling the pulse width of oscillator two while oscillator two is an audio oscillator. But that's not how they designed it. So you have to come up with other methods to uh, basically have a, you know, sine wave modulate oscillator two. And I will show you those at some point in the future. Again, we have the same. Uh, sorts of functionality. You can bring the sample and hold in. And the envelope. Um, you can modulate it with VCO1. A little bit more pronounced effect this time because we're on different pitches. But yeah, it gets really noisy really quickly. Without any input into this particular port, it's just the noise generator, which is modulating oscillator two. Once again, noise is a great modulation source for an oscillator because it introduces distortion and that makes it sound more organic. In low amounts, it just gives the oscillator a fuller, more natural sound. Um, you can also manually control the pulse width uh, without you know, having something input to control pulse width modulation. You can manually control the pulse width. You can also clean your sliders so they don't make poppy noises like that. Um, something I'm going to have to do. And then we have oscillator three which is pretty much the same as oscillator, oscillators one and two. Um, oscillator three has a saw wave output, uh, which is the one that's normaled. And it has a pulse wave output. Um, it ha does not have pulse width modulation, but you can manually adjust the pulse width. 